Hey friends, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. I'd like to show you one of my favorite everyday knots for a number of applications. It's an exploding hitch and it's known as the Highwayman's Hitch. The Highwayman's Hitch, also known as the Bank Robber's Knot, also known as the Getaway Hitch, is rumored to have been used by bank robbers back in the day when they wanted to quickly get away after doing their business. The horse was tied to a horizontal post in this fashion. So the left side is my load side, the right side is my release side. I place a bite over the host. With my working end on the right, I go up and around that bite. And then I bring a bite up through and tug to secure it. Let's get in a little tighter and we'll take another look at that. Put a bite against the host, up and around the back, if you accidentally put a spin in the cord as you fix this, I haven't noticed any appreciable difference in the security of the hitch. and so. Because it's, it's used mostly for trivial applications, I really wouldn't worry about it much, but this would be an intentionally misformed hitch. Instead of going up on the same right side, let's say I, I did this instead. In my testing, this really doesn't have an appreciable uh, difference in security. But you can see that it's possible to pull that through. And so, one of the lessons I've learned with this hitch is that the overall intrinsic security of it is a factor of a, a number of properties and one of them is the frictional characteristics of the host and, an, and the other is the difference in diameter. So now I'm going to take a three millimeter cord and show you how much easier it is to destabilize this, especially with a really small bite there and a smooth, so three millimeter on almost 30. If I just pull on this, look, I got it to go away. If I make it a little bit, make that bite a little longer, it'll be more secure, but I can still get that to pop through. And if I hammer on this long enough, I can get that to go. Now, <clears throat> If I were to take a really thick rope, so now we're up to 11 millimeter, it's been my observation that as the diameter of the cord or rope approaches that of the host, it becomes more secure and, and difficult to unintentionally spell. So, I'm going to want you to make sure that you can tie this in every possible geometry. So I'll start by placing it, um, again we'll repeat what you've already seen with the load on the left and the release on the right. But I can form that by placing the bite behind, just reversing everything. So now I'm going to go up and over. So everything's the same except it's reversed front and back. Load it, release it. Now I will do so in left right orientation. The release line will now be my left side. That'll be my working end. Up and around. And now the same but I'll be going behind the host. Okay, so we can tie it upside down and backwards. Okay, so now let's take a look at ways that we can make the highwayman's hitch more secure. And the first point is we can secure the highwayman's hitch from unintentional release of the release line in a few ways. One way would be to put a carabiner or other implement on the release loop, right? Because now if I try to pull, on the release line, it, it can't go.
Another way to do that would be if I don't have access to the end of the rope. Here I do, but I could always form an overhand knot here and that would prohibit it from being unintentionally released. I'd make that snug, obviously. But if I have access to the end of the rope, I can pass it through the release loop and now any attempt to release it will fail until I have unlocked it. As the host becomes smaller relative to the rope itself, we can make the rope the host. So I'm going to go around the tree trunk this time instead of the horizontal bar and I am going to form a highwayman's hitch on this cord using this side because I'm now able to form this in all orientations. I'll just get on get on with it. I've just formed a highwayman's hitch and I would call this, I've not seen this described in any in any books or or anything, but I would call this the running highwayman's hitch. And if you take the working end and lock it, well that that's just a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal. I would use this any place where I might use a running bowlin, for example. This is just this is just great because it's really easy to remove even after a fairly significant load. And it turns out that you've all, if you've watched my earlier videos, my first new knot introduction was the JRB hitch. And the JRB hitch uses the highwayman's hitch in its trigger mechanism. So let's, let's build a highwayman, uh, I'm sorry, a JRB hitch here. And we'll pay close attention and recognize that trigger. So I take a bite, place it around the host. The top line is going to be my, uh, my load and the bottom is going to be my release. What I do is I form a highwayman's hitch on these two strands using this. Pull this through. I'm forming a highwayman's hitch right here. Try to stay out of your field of view. So that's, that's a JRB hitch. You're familiar with it. And if you're not, you can refer to my other videos. It's also a quick release, and I do use this for life safety applications. And it's got that highwayman's hitch in there, and I can lock it in much the same fashion. So you can see what's happening here. We're building on our, uh, our working knowledge of the highwayman's hitch. And I've got some other applications for it in the future. So I wanted to make sure that you were familiar with it and that you understand that in its trivial form it shouldn't be used for life life safety applications but when we take it to the level of the JRB hitch it is strong and secure and I do use it for uh, life safety applications provided that it is locked. So one last trick let's take a JRB hitch. I have some folks who We'll use the JRB hitch for rappel applications, but only if they can lock it with and have it require two separate and independent actions before it's released. So that's that's my JRB hitch, and the release line would go here. So one way to lock this to ensure a second and independent action is required would be to form a highwayman's hitch here on these two lines. So now my hitch is loaded and any attempt to pull on the release line will not allow it to be released because it's it's locked but I can repel and then provided that I hit my release cords in the right sequence first the green one and then the red one I'm able to release my JRB hitch there you have it the high women's hitch super handy hitch for a number of applications and don't forget the running variant.
Thank you very much.